to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, finally the day has dawned when you desire to eat the Passover with your holy apostles. We ask you to show us your heavenly banquet on the last day, to foster in us a desire for it, and lead to lead us to it, so that we may be seated at your table there. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the Lamb of God who voluntarily became the Paschal Lamb and offered himself as redeeming sacrifice. He truly gave us his body as food and his blood as drink, as a pledge of eternal life. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast, and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, you are the word of the eternal Father, and you became man to save us. You fulfilled the laws of the old covenant to lead us to worship in spirit and in truth. You wash the feet of your apostles to teach us humility and love. You ate the Passover lamb with them so that you yourself might become our Passover and our lamb. We glorify and thank you because you offered yourself for us as an eternal paschal sacrifice. You gave us the mystery of the Holy Eucharist as a pledge of the resurrection and new life. You shared your eternal priesthood with the apostles and their successors, the priest of the new covenant. Through their hands you offer yourself to the Father as a pure and acceptable sacrifice. Now, O Lord, as we commemorate your Last Supper, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to give your church priests who will offer you in sacrifice, celebrate your holy mysteries, and make known your teachings, so that your name may be blessed, your kingdom may come, and your will may be done upon earth. Grant forgiveness to sinners and peace to the world. Grant us a good life, so that we may pass safely from this world to everlasting life, and in your heavenly kingdom sit with you at the table of your eternal Paschal banquet. 
We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O host and banquet, accept our incense and our prayers at this Paschal feast in which you have allowed us to participate by giving us your body to eat and your blood to drink. May we also share in your passion, your death, and your resurrection, that we may one day meet you at your heavenly banquet. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
and drink it for forgiveness and for new life. Hear the church talk to her children. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until it comes again. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of our Lord. A person should examine himself and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many young of you are ill and infirm, and a considerable number are dying. If we discerned ourselves, we would not be under judgment. But since we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we may not be condemned along the world. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, 
Now the feast of the unleavened bread, called the Passover, was drawing near. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, the one named Iscariot, who was counted among the twelve. And he went to the chief priests and to the temple guards in order to discuss a plan for handing him over to them. They were pleased, and they agreed to pay him money. He accepted their offer, and he sought a favorable opportunity to hand him over to them in the absence of a crowd. And when the day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread arrived, the day for sacrificing the Passover lamb, he sent out Peter and John, instructing them, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And they asked him, Where do you wish us to make the preparations? And he answered them, When you go into this city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house that he enters and say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room that is furnished. Make the preparations there. Then they went off and they found everything exactly as he had told them. And there they, prefer, they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he took his place at table with the apostles. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, Take this, and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, and he said the blessing, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which shall be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the day of the unleavened bread arrived, the day for sacrificing the Paschal Lamb. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You see the reference in our prayers in the Husoyo and that to the day. And always in the sacraments, in the Divine Rose, 
There is always past, present, and future. And the emphasis, when we look at the doctrine of the Catholic Church on the Eucharist, it is simultaneously the blood poured forth of our Lord on Calvary. It is the present moment of the one who offers and is offered in the sacrifice at this present moment as eternal high priest. And it is also the day of judgment which is made present, the eschaton. And what you see by the division of the Western Church, the Eastern Western Church of Constantinople, and the Eastern Church of Syria, you see that each of them have hung on to one of those three aspects. They all believe the same thing, but they have made an emphasis upon one of those three aspects of past, present, and future. The Western Church of Rome emphasizes the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God shed upon Calvary. And that's quite true. He is the Paschal Lamb. Whereas Byzantium will emphasize the eternal glory of the eternal high priest at the right hand of his Father in glory, who now at this moment on this altar offers his one single unique sacrifice from his place in glory. And that is also true. And the Syrian tradition, which is often forgotten by the church at large, emphasizes that it all is pointing us towards the last day. And it makes, in a way, present also that day of judgment here and now. Which is why St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, says that a man must judge himself, discern himself before the presence, and discern the body of the Lord, lest he eat and drink to himself condemnation. Remember the word crisis in English, originally in the Greek, crisis means judgment, discernment. That's what crisis means. The ability to discern and to judge. And that great emphasis upon the eschaton, the last day, which again, why we have the origin, it's among that Aramaic expression of maranatha, morantha, our Lord is coming. Emphasizing the great day that not only will the blood of the Lamb that redeems humanity, the reality of the Paschal Lamb, not only the reality of the sacramental presence of the divine Eucharist be also true, but on that day, the very priest himself will reveal himself in full glory of the stupendousness of that work of redemption. And so the Syrian church always looks to that day. That is what we want. Because even though it is correct that we commemorate the past events of the blood of the Lamb shed, his death and resurrection, which is true for our redemption, and it is also true that in the sacramental mystery, the eternal high priest offers himself, and he does the offering at this present moment within the sacrament, within the divine rosa, it's true. But on the last day, it will be he himself who is present to us in his personal presence. And so the Syrian church has always looked towards that day. So you see it in the very opening prayer of the, of the Mass tonight. The ask to dispose us, to transform us, that we may sit down with you at that banquet on the last day. The last day. The last day. It comes up several times within these prayers of the opening prayer and within the Husoyo. In the Syriac vision, the last day is never something that we fear. It's something that we have great desire for. It is the thing, actually, quite honestly, that we look for by coming to the divine altar. We look for that presence of our Lord. We desire for him to manifest himself to us personally in that divine sacrament. And that reality that we desire to find for this moment, for one just brief time on a Thursday evening or on a Sunday morning, or on a weekday morning, that one moment of being able to find crisis, judgment, discernment, the presence of our Lord, we long, because we can only find it for that moment in a personal way within the sacrament, and how we long for it to be the reality for all eternity as a permanent state, face to face. That is what the Syrian tradition fixes on, because this is what we're looking for even in the sacrament. Our gratitude for the blood of the Paschal Lamb, our adoration in spirit and in truth, as it talks about again in the Husoyo, in this present moment around the divine altar. All these things are beautiful, and they're absolutely true, and it's what we look for by our Catholic faith. 
but how we long for the reality of that presence to make it manifest itself in all of its glory. So we ask in, this, in these prayers this evening to bring us into the full expansion of our faith and the great desire to dispose us so that not only when we are at the altar, but in the very lives that we live in the pursuit of virtue and of goodness and of the imitation of Christ, that it prepares us to sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What it's doing is echoing the gospel. We had it earlier this week. When our Lord is in teaching and trying to make them understand your vision is not the vision of God before the scribes and the Pharisees, before Jews who are very pious and who see themselves as serving God well. And our Lord is saying, but you have to actually open up this vision larger. Your interpretation of God isn't necessarily the one that's the correct way. And he's trying to open their vision. This is what causes the clash with them. They see him as an upstart, this young rabbi. Whereas in our prayers, it says that on the night that he celebrates the Passover, it's so to make himself the true Passover lamb, to take what had been foreshadowed in the past under the law of Moses and to manifest himself in that reality of being the true and the unique Passover lamb. But that clash we hear echoed in the gospel because our Lord says, you will see many from the north and the south and from the east and the west coming to sit down at the table in the kingdom with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you will be locked out. This transformation to be able to sit down means the change of the vision, which is why when you read the Gospels, and you should be reading them, the Passion, this week. Take, just go through the four Gospels and read the Passion. You see that what our Lord is doing in the first weeks, every day he's at the temple teaching, 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 teaching. Salvation comes through doctrine. Salvation comes through teaching. And it's what they're rejecting. They don't want to hear this. But what we see then is what's echoed within our prayers is that we're asking, do teach us. Do transform my mind. Do transform my spirit. So that it's not a question of sin or or, or grace or whatever, but that your grace act on me now. Not that I merit to enter heaven to go someplace, but my desire is to see your divine presence and to be able to be prepared now so that when that day comes, on that day, I shall also be able to sit with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the fullness of your presence, transfigured by your glory. That's the meaning of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God Dem hey dan lo ho, al wot al lo ho dem chadeta yut. 